Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, this lecture is going to be uh, slightly different from the previous ones. In the last couple of lectures, we saw concentration, central limit theorem and various kind of properties when we have IID samples and we uh, look at uh, descriptive statistics or other things like that. What can we say about convergence and uh, things like that? We were looking at those kind of properties and how useful they are. Uh, now, we will sort of step back a little bit and uh, look at uh, some interesting properties of uh, uh, various types of distributions. In fact, uh, there are several distributions. So far, we have seen very few distributions, right? We saw uh, in the continuous world particularly, we saw the uniform distribution, we saw the exponential distribution, we saw the Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution, uh, but we did not see uh, several other distributions that occur uh, quite often, at least in statistics, uh, quite often these other type of distributions occur and uh, they have a lot of connections uh, between each other. Now, one of the things about uh, continuous distributions as you might have already realized is a lot of properties depend on integration and complicated, uh, you know, manipulations involving integrations. Uh, by themselves, each step is not very hard, uh, but you know, this uh, series of integrations and simplifications and all that and quite often it is uh, it's possible that we get lost in the middle of all those calculations and sort of lose the big picture. Uh, but on the other hand, if you only give the big picture and you don't know the details, there is this problem of, you know, you don't have the confidence that you really know anything, right? So, you have to just keep uh, talking without having a solid foundation. So, uh, one needs to strike a balance between the two and uh, that's hard in a course like this, in a program like this, uh, where people don't have a very rigorous uh, math uh, foundation sometimes. So, I, I, I'm, what I'm going to do is mostly focus on the big results and provide some hints at how, why these things could possibly be, possibly be true and why and some direction on how these things are proven, okay. So, I will stop at that, uh, but it is very important to know these properties. Many of the properties that I will state are important and uh, many of these distributions we will study are very important. They often occur in practice, the shapes and the way they are, uh, you know, they occur often in practice and it is good to know them. Uh, at least when you study statistics and all that. So, so this lecture, relatively short lecture is going to be just uh, a sim uh, like assortment of facts about various different distributions. We will study a lot of new distributions and uh, we will see uh, connections between them, okay. So, let us get started. So, here is uh, some uh, histograms that I have uh, picked up from, uh, you know, from, uh, from within the uh, I mean, I have generated some data in Python and I have drawn some histograms for it and uh, this is how these histograms are looking. So, there are various types of histograms you can see. Uh, mostly, I want you to focus on if you were to approximate these things with a CDF, you are probably going to draw lines like this, right. So, you are going to draw something like this for this guy, right. So, approximating with a PDF, so for this guy you are going to probably draw something like this. So, for this guy, it is probably going to be something like this, the tail is a bit longer here, okay. And for this guy, it is probably going to be something of this shape, a U sort of shape, right, okay. So, so, so basically all, all these kind of things can happen in practice. The, the distribution can have different types of shape, okay. The shape can be different. The location of the peak may be different and the scale may be different, okay. So, so you will see quite often in many distributions, uh, the parameters are called uh, shape parameters, location parameters and scale parameters, okay. So, shape, location and scale are three words that are often used to describe uh, the parameters of a probability distribution and you can see for instance, the first one, the hist one I have drawn here, it is like a Gaussian normal sort of distribution. You can think of the location as being 0, uh, the scale basically the how much it is multiplied by that would be the variance parameter, location is the mean uh, shape I guess there is no real shape uh, going on here, so there is no shape parameter. Uh, for the exponential distribution there is only one parameter, sometimes uh, people also call uh, have a rate parameter, okay, sometimes rate is considered a parameter. If you have e power minus some constant into x, that constant is always called a rate, <coughs> okay, so that sort of tells you the rate of fall in some sense. So, how quickly it falls? So, if you look at e power minus lambda x, as lambda increases, it is going to fall faster and faster, right? So, that is the sort of 
uh, shape and location and things like that. And you notice this histogram 3, it sort of rises for a while and then falls. So this is a different sort of shape and look at this shape, it's, it's only between 0 and 1. The previous uh, distributions all seem to go uh, for all x and hist 4 is only between 0 and 1 and has a u shape. So strange sort of uh, shapes and you can have all sorts of shapes uh, in, in, uh, that, that might occur in the phenomenon that you are interested in and it is good to know what are all these distributions out there, what are all the standard distributions, different shapes, at least mentally or I mean at least for you to picture what they are and uh, know them, okay. You do not have to remember all the formulae by heart, today Wikipedia and so many other references would give you all these things, you do not need to uh, mug up the formulae themselves. But this connection between shapes and how the distribution looks like, it is good to have a sense of that. Is it looking like an exponential? Is it looking like a normal? Is it looking like something else, right? So what are all these shapes? We, so what we are going to do in this lecture is look at a bunch of standard distributions. I will, I will draw some histograms, give you some expression, give you some intuition and describe some connections between these things, okay. So that is what we will do and it is useful when you model, when you, when you pick up a histogram it's, and you see its general shape, you may want to think in the back of your mind, hey this looks like this distribution, this looks like that distribution like that, right. So it is good to at least know that uh, from a high level, at least for this course we will mostly focus on things at that level. We may not do intricate calculations using various integration techniques with the distribution, but uh, you should sort of know the connections and where they are from. Let us get started. So one of the first um, and we have seen already that the normal distribution occurs so many times in statistics and it is very, very important, uh, it is a vital distribution to know uh, very, very well. And this uh, normal distribution satisfies this really, really interesting property uh, which uh, you know, it is sort of unique to it in some sense, okay. So supposing you have n iid random variables which are all normal, okay, iid normal. Let us say each one, okay, so I am saying iid normal, it is not iid here, I am sorry about that, it is independent and normal. Independent and normal, I do not need the identical uh, distribution, uh, so I kept saying iid, apologies for that, uh, independent normals, okay, it is normal. So this is a, uh, this is a very, very nice result about uh, IID normal random variables and this you should know very well, okay. So in, in this is a very standard result in probability, uh, not too hard to prove. So let me first state the result and then describe what it is, okay. So you have n I I independent normal random variables x1 to xn, xi is normal, its mean is mu i and its variance is sigma i squared. So x1 will have mean mu1 sigma1 squared, x2 will have mean mu2 sigma2 squared. So different normal distributions, different means, different variances possibly, but they are all independent, the independence is important, okay. And then what do I do? I do a linear combination of them. So this linear combination is a powerful thing that is used often repeatedly in so many different places. So for instance, I might call a random variable y to be equal to a1 times x1 plus a2 times x2 plus so on till an times x. Some constant, you know, it could be, you know, 1, 2, 3, whatever, you know. So, so I am doing a linear combination of the x1 to xn. Each of them are in normal and they are all independent. I am doing a linear combination. So it turns out the linear combination is also normal, okay. So that is a huge uh, result and it is uh, very important to know this by heart. This result is very important to know linear combination of independent normals is normal, okay. So y is normal with mean mu and variance sigma squared and once you know it is independent, finding the mean and variance is easy, right? We do not we don't need to know the distribution, okay. So whatever may be the distribution, whether they are independent or not, expected value of y is always this, right? So for a linear combination, expected value of y is easy to find, okay. Variance, um, not so easy if they are correlated, but if they are uncorrelated itself, you can find the variance very easily and the variance will come out like this, right, a1 squared, sigma1 squared, so on, okay. Now on top of it, if the random variables are independent and they are normal, then it turns out y itself has a normal distribution. The distribution of y itself is very easy to identify and it is normal, okay. So this, this result is the, the final bottom line here, linear combinations of independent normals is again normally distributed. The proof is actually very, very simple, okay. You just try and find the moment generating function of y, okay. 
you are going to try and find expected value of e power lambda y, right? What is this going to be? Expected value of e power lambda a1 x1 plus a n x n, okay? And what is this going to be? The product of the MGFs, right? So, it is going to be m x1, okay? So, of course, you have the a1 and all that. So, let me not write that one. m of e power, uh, no, not m. It is e of <laughs> e power lambda a1 x1 dot 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 expected value of e power lambda a n x n. So, this comes from the independence, right? So, this comes because of the independence and each of this, what is this guy? This guy is going to be, uh, you know, like e power uh, lambda squared sigma 1 squared a 1 squared by 2 dot 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 e power lambda squared a n squared sigma n squared by 2. Now, if you multiply all this, notice what happens in the numerator. I mean, after you multiply, what happens inside the exponent? You are going to get e power lambda squared times a 1 squared. Okay, so I made one little uh, assumption here. So, let us just say, so in the proof, just for simplicity, I will assume mu 1 uh, to mu n is 0. Okay, so if it is not 0, I have to centralize and adjust, etc. I will assume that uh, that is 0 of convenience a 1 sigma squared plus a n squared sigma n squared by 2. Okay. So, this is nothing but a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance equal to this guy, right? So, you see notice how the fact that the moment generating function for normal is e power lambda squared something times the variance plays a role here, okay? So, it is very simple proof. Uh, you can, you all you have to do is use the moment generating function and go back and forth between moment generating function and the linear combination. It plays well with uh, the linear combination and the independence and you get the answer. Okay. So, this is sort of uh, unique to the normal distribution. It is a very powerful property. Uh, there are very various reasons why, I mean, you may be doing maths too now and you may know about the value of linear combinations and linear functions. And uh, quite often in practice, uh, when you have a bunch of variables, pretty much the only thing you can do is linear combination <laughs> if you want to derive something from it. And a lot of linear combinations are used in practice and knowing the distributions is very interesting, right? So, if each of the variables is independent and they are normal, then the linear combination is also not okay. Very nice, simple and elegant property for normal distribution. Okay. So, now let us move on to another type of distribution which is called the gamma distribution and uh, oh, I thought I corrected this. So, looks like this is not worked out. Okay. Apologies for that. This has got to be beta. Okay. So, there are uh, uh, the, so we say a random variable x is gamma distributed with two parameters, alpha and beta, okay? So, anytime we have a distribution, we'll have parameters for the distribution, okay? So, that's the first thing to remember, okay? So, if you think of a uniform distribution, usually it has two parameters, a comma b, as in it's uniform from a to b. If you think of a normal distribution, again, it has two parameters. Normal distribution has parameters mu and sigma square, mean and variance. If you think of the exponential distribution, it has one parameter, lambda, Okay, the PDF is lambda e power minus lambda x. Okay, so parameters are important in the uh, distribution, and when you vary the parameter, properties of the distribution vary. The scale varies, the location varies, you know things like that. The shape varies, all of that varies. Likewise, for this gamma distribution, there are two parameters. One is usually called alpha, the other is usually called beta. Okay, the PDF of the gamma distribution, the probability density function of the gamma distribution, is proportional to, okay, it's proportional to x power alpha minus one and e power minus beta x, x power alpha minus 1 times e power minus beta x, there is no and there, okay. So, this is the shape of the PDF, okay. And, and it is for x positive, okay. The gamma distribution does not work for x negative, it is only for x positive. It is not like normal, you know, normal is on both sides, right. So, this is only on one side, it is like the exponential distribution in some sense, okay. So, it is proportional to x power alpha minus 1 e power minus beta x. Why do I say proportional to? How do I find the constant of the proportionality? Supposing you have to find constant of the proportionality, it is it's exactly what? If you want to write the exact formula, it is going to be x power alpha minus 1 e power minus beta x divided by integral 0 to infinity x power alpha minus 1 e power minus beta x dx. Okay? So, this integral 
uh, is usually called the gamma function and all that. But you know, we are, we are not worried so much about this integration. What's, what's really important is the shape, okay, and this controls the shape of the distribution, okay. So how the distribution looks is controlled by this. Okay, so this guy merely scales. Okay, so overall scaling, right? So whatever that may be, it's not very relevant to us. It, it may give us the exact form, etc. But what is really important is the proportionality with x, right? So these kind of functions are special functions and complicated functions. So we're not going to go into detail of that here. Uh, you can go in and read in some other sources if you like. People define this as the gamma function, call it gamma of alpha. It has so many interesting properties. But for us, what's most important is this shape. So later on, I'll show you some pictures. And you can also draw, right? You can open up Python, Matplotlib, or Desmos, or anything, and try sketching this kind of function, x bar alpha minus 1, e power min minus beta x. How will this function look? Okay. Remember, e power minus beta x is going to look like this. This is going to be e power minus beta x. What is x bar alpha, alpha minus 1? It's going to go like this, right? x bar alpha minus 1, assume, let's say, alpha greater than 1. Okay. So it's, it's going to go off like this. So when I multiply these two, what's going to happen? It's going to start at 0, increase for some time, and then fall down. Okay? So this will be the shape of the product x bar alpha minus 1, e power minus beta x, at least for alpha greater than 1. Okay? So you notice there will be this increase for a little while and fall down. As alpha increases, the, the, the rise will be a little bit more. As alpha de decreases, if alpha equals 1, there is no rise, it's only a fall. Okay? It becomes exponential at, uh, at that stage. Okay? So this is how the shape will look. We'll see later on how this looks, etc. Okay? So interesting things you can notice, if, if alpha is equal to 1, you get the exponential distribution. right? So for alpha equal to 1, you get the exponential distribution. So the gamma distribution is a generalization of the exponential distribution. Or another way to look at it is, the exponential distribution is a special case of the gamma distribution. Gamma distribution is more general. Okay? Now there are two parameters here. The first parameter alpha needs to be positive. It's called the shape parameter. The second parameter is beta. It's, uh, it's called a rate parameter. It's greater than 0. Uh, often the inverse of the rate is used and it's called the scale parameter. Okay? Now, uh, one can find the mean and variance of the gamma distribution. It's alpha by beta squared. Alpha by beta is the mean. Variance is alpha by beta squared. You can also find the moment generating function, okay, even though we won't spend uh, too much time into it. Okay? So, a couple of very interesting properties. So, the first two properties are simple enough. Mean and variance, you can try to prove it. It's, it's a bit complicated. Again, a lot of the proofs will involve integration and we're not going to go into that kind of detail here. But these kind of formulae are easy enough to remember, right? Mean is alpha by beta. Variance is alpha by beta squared. If needed, you can remember. But, you know, you can always look it up and you don't need to know these things by heart. You can look up these distributions elsewhere. And if we ask a question about all these distributions, I don't think we're going to emphasize the knowledge of these kind of formulae too much. So it's, it's not too bad uh, to, to study this. Uh, it's just a different shape in the distribution, a very nice uh, description of the shape of the density. Okay? So here are a couple of interesting properties. So these two properties are why uh, sort of gamma is very interesting in practice. If you take IID exponential distributions, okay, so let's say n of them, and then add them together, it turns out you get the gamma distribution with alpha being equal to n and the beta being the same beta. Okay? So that's an interesting property. So you add n IID exponential distributions, you get the gamma distribution. Okay? Remember exponential is just e power minus beta x. n of them together, if you add the distributions, the density becomes something like x power n minus 1 times e power minus beta x. Okay, so that's the picture you should have in mind. You have exponentials. You keep adding repeated copies, repeated independent copies of those random variables. The density sort of becomes x power n minus 1 uh, e power x, e power minus beta x. Okay, so that's sort of the first result. Uh, again, we won't prove this. This proof uses uh, moment generating function and other methods. Here's another very, very interesting property. Okay? If you square the normal distribution, you take a normally distributed random variable and then you square it. Okay, so when you square a random variable, it becomes positive, right? It cannot go negative. So it's only positive. And it turns out the square is a gamma distribution. And the parameters are a bit uh, crazy. It's sort of like half and 1 by 2 uh, sigma squared. So, so what is this? So this is proportional to density. The PDF 
is proportional to x power minus half e power minus x by 2 sigma square. So, this is the thing. Uh, look at this x power minus half. So, it is going to be 1 by root x. Okay. So, its value at x being close to 0, it is sort of blowing up. That is the sort of uh, uh, distribution you get. You take the uh, normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square and square it. Okay. You suddenly get something which is very, very likely to take values very close to 0. Okay. In some sense, right? relatively. If you take a small window close to 0, small window away from 0, the same window length close to 0 has much higher probability of occurring. Okay. Interesting fact about the gamma distribution. Try sketching this gamma half 1 by 2 sigma squared uh, somewhere and you can open up a discourse thread, post your sketch of this and see why, uh, whether that is reasonable. Find the histogram, generate random numbers which are Gaussian distributed, square them, find the histogram, see if it meets, meets the gamma distribution. Okay. So, that is a nice exercise for you to try. Okay. So, each of these relationships, while I have written it, written it down as a theoretical result, a very, very good exercise is to take your Python notebook and create, you know, you know commands that will show this. Okay. So, you take a thousand Gaussian random variates as in basically samples generated in Python, you square them, histogram them and plot the gamma PDF on top of it and see if uh, that matches. It has to match. Okay. So, these are nice things for you to try to reinforce uh, some of these ideas. Okay, so, that is all I wanted to say about the gamma distribution. It will occur uh, quite often in statistics and it is useful to know. Okay. The next is something called the Cauchy distribution. It is a very interesting and unique sort of distribution that uh, occurs in probability theory. Uh, once again, it has got two parameters, a location parameter theta which could be positive or negative and a scale parameter alpha which needs to be positive. And usually, alpha squared is what people write, but you know, alpha is also involved there. Okay. The PDF, the density in this case can be written very neatly. It is equal to 1 by pi alpha by alpha squared plus x minus theta whole squared. You can try to plot it. We will plot it later and see. I will encourage you to plot it yourself as well. Once again, two parameters in this distribution, location parameter theta and a scale parameter alpha. Okay, you can imagine why theta is the location and you can see why that is so. Okay. So, this, way, this uh, distribution is very interesting because the mean is undefined, the variance is undefined, the moment, moment generating function is undefined. All these things are undefined. You, there is no consistent way to put a number or even infinity for the mean. Okay? And uh, another very, very interesting property of the Cauchy distribution is if you take two IID normal 0 sigma squared random variables and then you divide them, take the quotient x divided by y, how do you find the distribution for x divided by y? turns out there are some methods which involve some integration and all that and that has a Cauchy 0, 1 distribution. Okay. Uh, theta equals 0, location 0 and alpha equals 1. No, notice this uh, bizarre interesting connection with two normal distributed random variables, you divide them, suddenly you get a Cauchy. Okay. Again a property that you can check with your Python notebook, right? a small little segment where uh, you, know, you, you generate a lot of uh, normal random variable independently and then divide get a lot of samples of x by y, then histogram it, then draw the Cauchy on top of it, do a hence density histogram, and then draw a Cauchy on top of it to check if this is true. Right? So, it will give you good experience in understanding and dealing with these kind of results. Once again, a unique distribution, it behaves like 1 by x squared. Because of that, the mean and uh, variance and all are undefined, uh, and, but it is still a valid distribution. Okay? So, something to think about. Okay, so the next distribution, okay, so, so many distributions are coming, I think this is the last one, okay, <laughs> let us see, I mean, I am hoping this is the last one, we will see. The next distribution that we will see, it is very common in statistics, is called the beta distribution, okay. Once again, two parameters, the first parameter is called alpha, the second parameter is again called beta, maybe I should call it something else, but it is common to call it beta, some people call it A and B, okay. Just to say that beta distribution of alpha comma beta looks a bit odd, but if uh, it's okay to put it there, but some people write a and b. Okay, the alpha and beta both are called shape parameters. They dictate the shape, and both have to be non-negative, greater than zero, greater than zero. And notice this. This is what's very different from the previous distributions we have seen. So the beta distribution has finite support. It's like sort of like a uniform distribution. It's uh, it's between zero and one. Okay. That is uh, interesting, is not it? For instance, if you put al alpha equal to 1, beta equal to 1, you indeed get the uniform distribution. Okay? 
think about it. If alpha is equal to 1, beta is equal to 1, the dependence on x vanishes and x is between 0 and 1, that is the uniform distribution. Otherwise, the density behaves as x power alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x power beta minus 1 for every beta. Sort of a complicated uh, dependency with alpha and beta. It turns out it is a valid PM, uh, PDF. Uh, it is proportional to this. So of course, you have to divide by something. Uh, what you have to divide by is a complicated gamma function, something, something, something. It is not relevant to us, but the proportional uh, thing is important. You will see in the plots that will come through. Okay. Uh, what is interesting and important about the beta distribution is the mean and the variance have very simple clear formulae. Okay. The mean is alpha by alpha plus beta. Okay. Nice formula, isn't it? And the variance is a similar formula involving alpha and uh, alpha plus this close bracket here, which I forgot alpha beta by alpha plus beta whole squared and alpha plus beta plus 1 times alpha plus beta plus 1, okay. So, there are some special cases, I know if you, if you let beta to be equal to 1 and vary alpha, then your uh, PDF is just proportional to x bar alpha minus 1. So, that is called the power function distribution, okay. So, x bar alpha minus 1 is an interesting, I mean as alpha increases, it takes higher and values closer to 1 with much higher probability, right. So, that is how x bar alpha minus 1 looks, okay. And uh, the next property is uh, very interesting. Uh, so, if you have two gamma distributions which are independent also, it is not mentioned here. If you have two gamma distributions, so this property will be sometimes uh, interesting. So, if you remember uh, the ratio of two normal independent distributions was the Cauchy distribution. In this case, if you take two gamma distributions, one with parameter alpha and 1 by theta, another with parameter beta and 1 by theta, that 1 by theta has to be the same, it can be any theta. Then it turns out x by x plus y, the fraction x by x plus y becomes a beta distribution with parameters alpha and beta, okay. So, here is crazy ratio result, okay. So, I mean, it is good to know these things, it is good to know that all these distributions are connected if you take ratios, if you take squares, you go between each other, okay. So, it is sort of odd, right. Look at it, the gamma distribution takes values from 0 to infinity, okay, right. That is what the two gamma distributions do. But if you do x by x plus y, you can have values only between 0 and 1, right. See, remember x by x plus y is always less than 1, okay. So, you will have values only between 0 and 1. So, this is like it, the whole thing gets squished into 0 to 1. And uh, given the various forms of it, it becomes actually a beta distribution, okay. So, it is proportional to uh, this guy, okay. So, those are the sort of things uh, one can prove. Once again, we are not proving many of these results and it is way beyond the scope of this course, but it is good to know that this is what happens. There are various shapes of distributions uh, for the, in the continuous world and they all have these very interesting interconnections between each other and very non-trivial uh, interconnections in some sense, okay. So, let me leave you with a few plots. I mean, these many of these uh, distributions had crazy expressions. Maybe you could not visualize some of them in your mind. Uh, I think this plot and you know, you should make plots like this. You should be able to make plots like this. You should use uh, Desmos if you like or you can use other uh, plotting tools. Your Python notebook is a very good plotting tool. I plotted this on a Python notebook, on, okay. So, you can use uh, any of these plots and uh, you know, the SciP stats uh, module has uh, so many, all these distributions are built into it. You just have to put the parameters in, you will get the answers, okay. So, that is what I did to get uh, these kind of plots, okay. So, the normal and the Cauchy distribution, I plotted them one on top of the other. So, if you remember, the normal distribution is e power minus x squared. It falls exponentially and Cauchy is only 1 by x squared, okay. So, you can see the Cauchy uh, sort of is below normal and then, but the tail is sort of thicker, okay, heavier tail. It goes above the normal distribution in some sense, okay. And uh, the gamma distribution, once again, the gamma 1 comma 1 is exponential. So, you see the blue curve is just exponential. And as the alpha parameter increases in the gamma distribution, you see that the curve goes right and right. The peak keeps going towards the right, okay. So, that is the gamma distribution for you. You can sort of visualize what happens uh, in the distribution. The beta distribution is has so many varieties, okay. So, it is between 0 and 1. You notice 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 is that U shape the U-shaped distribution you get. Uh, if you put 2 comma 2, it becomes like the inverted, uh, you know, like, like a cup shape like that. If you do 2 comma 5, it has a nice polynomial type, you know, rise and fall. It is all between 0 and 1 though, by the way. Huh? 
if you could if you do 1 comma 3 5 comma 1 if you make one of those random variables disappear so you'll see you'll get a power distribution or 1 minus x power distribution right if alpha goes to 1 then the one term disappears in beta right x power alpha minus 1 disappears it's only 1 minus x power alpha so you'll have a picture like this so it will have a fall like this or this way okay so say the power or the 1 minus x power okay so different uh, uh, types of uh, densities uh, you can plot them you can look at them uh, I will really encourage you to uh, you know add to the notebook that you have with uh, various different distributions and densities and how they look okay. Uh, that is the end of this lecture. I hope uh, this was useful for you in uh, learning about the various different types of distributions out there and some of these things, many of these things will come back and haunt us uh, later on in this course. Okay? Thank you very much.